what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. For those who's new, my name is Christian and I love plants. And I'm so happy you clicked on this video because that tells me you love plants as well too. And it really does bring me joy knowing that the plant community is growing. Whether you're just starting on your houseplant journey or a little bit more experienced, pretty much I'm here to share my experience with you guys so far. And in today's video, we're going to talk all about Hoya. Hoya plants are probably not as popular for the average plant person. Although I do think the popularity of Hoyas is starting to increase. Hoyas, also known as wax plants, are native to many Southeast Asian countries like China, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines, and many more. And they're often vines or creepers and sometimes shrubs that like to climb up or twine on trees and sometimes rocks. And most people love Hoyas because of their beautiful wax-like leaves and foliage, but also their beautiful blooms that smells really nice at times. For those who's just starting your houseplant journey, you're gonna come across your first Hoya one day. And my first one was the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. And uh, typically this is a little bit more common and you can easily find these guys on your big box stores or plant shops. They have these longer oval shaped leaves and the variegation is typically in the middle that's more cream and pinkish in color and it has a more of the green outer edge. While the similar one to this called the Crimson Queen has a variegation of that white and pink on the outer edge of the leaf, uh, almost looking like a crown. Now these guys look beautiful trailing or you can get them climbing up on a trellis. I like mine trailing and I'm actually going to put this on a hanging basket one day. So this was my first uh, Hoya that I've had for over two years now. I do warn you guys though, once you get your first Hoya, you're gonna wanna collect them all just like Pokemon. So I'm just kidding. But with so many varieties and species out there, it's hard to stop at just one. I had my first one back in 2018, the Crimson Princess. And two years later, I have over 10 in my Hoya collection. And I wanna add more because honestly, they are so beautiful and I think they are really easy to care for. So I'm gonna give you guys a tour of what I have so far. And then we'll talk about how I care for them and share with you guys some of my tips. Let's go. All right guys, so this is my little Hoya station and I just actually put this together uh, recently. Most of my Hoyas usually in the winter are, are on my desk that's closer to that south facing window that you see there. But now that it's you know starting to get to the spring and summer months, I do like to pull these guys back a bit because I don't want them to be too close to the window. Even though they like a lot of bright indirect light, uh, I can, you know they don't like to be really close to the window. Unlike my Ficus Elasticas, uh, they love being that close to the window. But in any event, here they are. There's about 10 in here, I think, or 11. And you guys have already met the Hoya Crimson Princess. And like I mentioned, I, I like this guy because the variegation is really beautiful. Uh, it usually comes in more of these cream uh, and white color, but sometimes you'll get shades of pink, especially as the leaf is brand new. And uh, there's growth going there. And this one is trailing really nice. And I think I'm gonna definitely keep this one trailing. Then this is my Hoya Philippines. Uh, as I mentioned, a lot of Hoyas are native to many uh, Southeast Asian countries. And sometimes they're actually named after the country itself. So, you know, I gotta get this on. You gotta represent the Philippines, right? But uh, I like the uh, foliage and leaves on this one. Uh, it's not as thick as like the Carnosa, but uh, you know, it's, it's still pretty thick. So it can, um, you know, tolerate a bit more of that bright light. Uh, something like a Hoya Densifolia, which I really like because it's a little bit more elongated and the leaves here are actually quite thin, uh, very similar to just like a common, you know, uh, tropical houseplant. And uh, yeah, it's showing you growth there, which is beautiful. But uh, yeah, so because the leaves here are a little bit more thin, I definitely wouldn't have these guys as close to the window um, like some of these guys would. But now that I pull these guys back, they should all be fine. Uh, it's about maybe four to five feet away from the window. And this is one of my newest one, the uh, Hoya Hindu Robe Compacta, uh, Arbo Marginita. So it's variegated. And that's one thing about Hoyas is a lot of them come in so many variegation, different types of variegation. This one is uh, the one with the cream and green, but you can see there's shades of pink. Uh, so very similar to uh, the Crimson Princess, as the new leaves come in, they're more in shades of pink. And eventually I think they're gonna fade and become more of this uh, green and uh, yellow or creamish color. So the next one you guys will see here is my Hoya Sunrise and one of the reasons why I love this particular Hoya is because of that reddish color around the, the edges of that leaf. Uh, really uh, you know similar to that kind of a uh, sun ray kind of look and uh, it's on a trellis and this one is uh, brand new as well too. I just got this a couple weeks ago, so it's still, it's in a little nursery container here. And uh, normally I will repot these guys, um, you know, in a couple of weeks, but because this is showing a bit of new growth, I don't know if you guys can see right there. I'm gonna wait till this kind of grows out because I don't wanna obviously shock the plant by repotting it and then, you know, prevent that leaf from growing out. So I'm gonna wait a bit, but uh, yeah, one of my newest favorite uh, Hoyas, cause again, I love, I love the, the petal-like look. So 
If this continues to grow on the trellis, it's gonna like resemble a shape of like the sun and then the rays. That's kind of what I'm going for. Another new one as well too is, uh, you guys have seen this in my last houseplant haul video, is the uh, Hoya Da Nang Vietnam. So again, another uh, name after a country. And uh, I love this kind of star-shaped look of the way the leaves are, uh, you know, kind of growing out of this uh, one stem. And there's a new stem right here that's growing. So uh, we'll see how uh, the new leaves come in. I can actually see a baby leaf right there. And uh, I like the length of these leaves, but more importantly, I really like the veins that's showing on it. Uh, so pretty cool. I have this guy, which is a Hoya, uh, uh, parasitica I think or no per Parista I don't know I'm gonna put a name on the uh, description there but uh, it's a splash kind so the variegation is more of the speckled look on it it's actually shot out a new vine that you guys see here and usually when it starts growing a new vine around the nose is where the leaves are gonna come from so you can see these tiny baby leaves are starting to show there and I can't wait to see how these leaves grow once these once the leaf kind of just uh, starts showing there it really does kind of uh, grow pretty quickly but uh, yeah so this is uh, Hoya parasitica, I think. <laughs> okay, next one is the, so this is a bit of a combination I did. Um, there's two types of Hoyas in here. And uh, you know, I, I, I want to plant two different types that have similar shapes and similar, uh, obviously, care. And this is the Ovavada Variegata, which is a little bit more circular shape that you guys see here. Obviously, inside as well, too, is the Carii Variegata, which is the heart-shaped leaf. And uh, yeah, so the Carii isn't growing as fast as the Ovavada, but um, the Ovavada gave me like four or five new leaves, uh, you know, just the last couple of months. And what's interesting about it is is the variegations here in the middle that you guys see it's that white and cream color but these new leaves for some reason and it's ended up looking more like a splash where the variegation is those speckled uh, so and then the the green or the cream color variegation in the middle has kind of faded or not as pro you know, not as obvious as like its previous leaves uh, so I thought that was really interesting and then unfortunately with the Hoya Carii the new leaves are kind of losing its heart-shaped leaf and uh, it doesn't have as much variegation as well so I'm, I'm guessing this is um, uh, a lot of more really being too close to the window I think uh, I'm not too sure yet but if you guys have any uh, tips or suggestions for those who's experienced with uh, Hoyas uh, you know comment and let me know uh, what I can do to kind of help this guy uh, grow a little bit more uh, of its usual heart-shaped leaf but I uh, really really like this combo and you know people ask me should you plant two different types of plants together and I think it's okay as long as they share a similar care tip like similar watering schedule, similar lighting. Uh, I think it should be fine. Um, this one, which is probably my second uh, oldest um, uh, Hoya that I have is a Macrophylla. And uh, I've had this guy for over two years now. I got this one at the same time I got my String of Hearts. But uh, what I like about this one is these massive leaves that is like a teardrop uh, shape. And I love the pattern uh, on those veins and the midrib and uh, almost that uh, kind of crack look. And uh, this is one of the newer leaves. Uh, it's a little bit more tender, unlike the older leaves, which gets a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, firm. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the variegation on here is on the edges. And uh, I haven't seen one that's more in the middle, but I like this one. It's shooting out a new vine. And like I said, you know, the leaves will come out of those nodes. So I'm hoping this one gives me a lot more uh, leaves this, uh, this summer. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, another one of my favorites. And then we have back here um, the... Okay, so the only Hoya that has ever bloomed uh, on me, and like I said, Hoyas have beautiful blooms. They, you know, most, mostly they, they smell really nice, but this Angleriana, which I really like because it has more of this like very um, kind of soft and trailing uh, elongated type of vine and the leaves are very uh, they're like these cute tiny uh, petal like leaves and this one needs watering for sure I can tell because the leaves are really soft uh, but this one is the only Hoya I've ever owned that bloomed and I remember when it first bloomed it had that beautiful you know star like look and uh, it, I was I was so happy with it because I've, I've never seen a Hoya bloom so I'm definitely gonna make sure uh, we're gonna try and get a lot of these guys blooming this year but I really like this one because it has just this nice whimsical uh, look to it but uh yeah my next Hoya or the last one I'm gonna show you guys here is another new one that I got uh, recently from uh, Crystal Star Nursery is this Hoya Matilde and it's on this trellis which I really like because uh, you know it's just beautiful when it's kind of like uh, you know uh, growing and climbing up and it has this new vine and I think 
I think this is gonna be a bloom, guys. Oh my gosh. I, I think so. I, I'm gonna I'll show you guys a close up and you tell me if that's gonna be a bloom. I just noticed that right now. Uh, maybe not, but <laughs> but this has more of that circular uh, type of leaves and um, you know it kind of reminds me of a um, this kidia that I have um, but it has a bit of splash uh, speckled uh, variegation on its leaves and it's growing this new vine as well too and I'm wondering if that is a bloom uh, I'm gonna do a close-up and you guys tell me if it's a bloom or if it's going to be a bloom but uh, yeah I really like this one this this is a beauty as well so those are all the Hoyas I have so far. And uh, obviously, you know, I like I said, there's so many more varieties. Every time I'm on uh, the website looking for uh, Hoyas, uh, there's so much more I wanna add. And I'm, 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 I like them. And honestly, I think they are really easy to care for. And I'm gonna share with you guys kind of how I care for them. Everything from lighting to the soil mix I use and uh, my watering and whatnot. So, all right guys, so how I care for these Hoyas is pretty simple. Uh, when it comes to lighting, as I mentioned, they love a lot of bright in the direct light, preferably south facing window. East or west is also good, but I don't recommend them uh, for anyone who's got a north facing window. Although I did have my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess and the Macrophylla in my office for about um, a, the last year and they did okay and I had a north facing window. So so definitely, you know, they can probably do well. Uh, then again, I did have a lot of fluorescent lighting uh, all, day, all day long, so that probably helped as well. But uh, they will do a lot better in a bright and direct light in uh, south, east or west and um, don't have them too close to the window like I mentioned because I did that with one of my Hoya carry eyes and it was not growing. I literally had it so close to the window. So once I pulled it back, then I started to see a lot more growth and this is the reason why I kind of pulled these guys back from obviously there on the desk and over here now uh, near this bookshelf. So watering, I water them very similar to my cacti or succulent type of plants because they are a bit semi-succulent. I let the soil go completely bone dry between waterings, even waiting a few more days after they become dry to water them. And when I do water it, I water it really, really well. And I make sure that that water is draining through really nicely to wash all the roots, make sure all the nutrients from the soil and the roots kind of blend together and before placing them back in their decorative pot and to their location. So make sure that when you are watering, you allow that water to drain through before placing it back. These guys don't need a lot of high humidity. My regular humidity level here in my bedroom is fine and even downstairs as well too in the living room. So uh, you don't need to get like a humidifier on these guys. When it comes to the soil, makes they love well drainage and rich mixture. Uh, my go-to is usually 60% regular potting mix, 40% cacti soil, a bit of perlite and a bit of orchid bark to help with that drainage. You can add a bit of the orchid mix as well as warm casting for additional nutrients uh, but these guys do fine in kind of uh, you know your, my go-to mixture. When it comes to repotting, Hoyas actually like to be a bit snug and a bit root bound. My Hoya Crimson Princess and the Macrophylla has actually been in that four inch container for over two years now and I don't think I'm gonna move them up at all this year maybe next year. Uh, my newest Hoyas, the uh, Vietnam and the Sunrise, uh, they are in their tiny uh, nursery container that I got when I purchased this. I am just gonna leave them there as I mentioned because I wanna wait till some of those new growth uh, kinda just grows out. And then from there, I'm gonna move them to a four inch container and then that way they won't need to be repotted for a good you know, two or three years. When it comes to blooms, I only had one of my Hoyas bloom one year, which was the Angleriana as I mentioned. And the way to kinda help your Hoya bloom is obviously a lot of bright indirect light and warm temperatures. Uh, they also do not like to have any cold draft or hot air kind of blowing on them so keep them away from your air conditioner or your heater and also another way to kind of help them bloom is obviously fertilize them now I usually don't fertilize my plants but this year I'm definitely going to want to fertilize my Hoyas to help them bloom they usually like an even balanced type of uh, plant food you know like a 10 10 10 uh, but yeah so we're definitely gonna do that this year twice a year in the beginning of the growing season and near the end of the growing season just kind of see if they will bloom so definitely follow me on Instagram because that's where I usually do my daily vlogs and give you guys an update on how these plants are doing uh, but yeah I'm, I'm excited to watch these guys bloom because uh, their blooms are so beautiful when it comes to the growth rate it does depend on the type of Hoya I do find the Crimson Princess the Macrophylla and the Ovavada are growing a lot faster than say a Hindu rope also the Angleriana surprisingly grows really fast and they typically do grow really really well during the growing season they do become a little bit more dormant and and like most plants during the winter where they don't really show a lot of growth uh, really when it comes to winter especially if you live in Canada our goal is 
just keep them alive, right? But uh, yeah, so growth rate really does depend on the type of Hoya. The pests I've only encountered with my Hoyas are mealybugs. And honestly, mealybugs are probably the easiest uh, to get rid of. Uh, so I actually don't mind getting them, but they can also attract some aphides and spider mites, which is a little bit more difficult to get rid of. Uh, but usually, you know, me spraying down my uh, Hoyas, you know, once, you know, in the beginning of the growing season with insecticide soap, just kind of do the preventive measures and obviously checking to make sure in those crevices and under the leaves to see if there's any bugs. And that's what you should do with any of your plants anyway to avoid getting a big, you know, pest infestation going on. Uh, but yeah, so mealybugs only one year, but other than that, I haven't experienced any other uh, pests when it comes to them. Overall, I do think Hoyas are a beginner's houseplant. They are really, really easy to care for, especially if you're not an overwaterer, and especially if you have good lighting in your home. And they're beautiful. They are so beautiful. And again, there's so many varieties, but I'm telling you, once you get your first one, you're gonna want more. But I'm curious to find out from those of you guys who have a little bit more experience with Hoyas, do you think it's a beginner houseplant? And also, what was your first Hoya and how many Hoyas do you have? And for those who's new, who's looking to get a Hoya, which one are you looking to get? Comment and let me know. Other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.